Well, let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. Jason Seymour was a DC in 2023, but this year they added Henry Baker to the co-DC with Coach Seymour. In addition to co-DC, Baker will be with the corners as the cornerback coach. He spent his last four seasons coaching corners at Maryland. What changes, if anything, do you expect from this defensive scheme? Uh, well, there's obviously going to be changes because there's several new coaches that are on that defensive side of the ball. Uh, Marshall made several moves. <clears throat> Bringing in Henry uh, Baker was just one of those. Also, uh, they elevated defensive analyst to safeties coach this year, Bob Shoup. And that's a guy, holy moly, four-plus decades in coaching at a high level. You're talking about a former defensive coordinator at Penn State, at Michigan State, and at Tennessee, and as was also the safeties coach at Michigan, and now he's our safeties coach. So the wealth of knowledge that is just on that back end of the defense alone is a little mind-boggling. Also, um, defensive coordinator Jason Seymour will also coach linebackers this year. Uh, the linebackers coach from a year ago was let go. So uh, when Coach Seymour came to us, he was linebackers coach at Georgia Tech. So that's a natural type fit and somewhere he wants to get back in, uh, you know, contributing more so on a, on a, on a second-level type area. Um, and then, of course, the defensive line has just been coached up since Ralph Street has been here. And, and he is part of Huff's inaugural staff. He's a herd all-time great. He knows a thing or two about defensive line play at a freaking high level. And he's just churned out great defensive lines year in and year out since he's been here with the herd. And of course, it, and all of that looks great on paper, but you got to have the guys to execute, right? And Marshall took hits either through exhaustion of eligibility, heading to the draft, or the transfer portal. It's documented. We've talked about it. And some of it is a little concerning because this is where some of those guys that we thought would be impact players on defense hit the portal and left, right? You, you can't, just like you can't replace Rasheen Ali with one guy, I don't think you can replace Owen Porter with one guy. You know, yeah, you might find a guy that rushes the passer faster. You might find a guy that can do this particular skill set better. But top to bottom, Owen Porter is a guy that is as rough and tumble and fast and fierce on his 75th snap of the game as he is on his first snap of the game. Now, that being said, there's obviously going to be changes. Marshall has a myriad of young defensive backs that cut their teeth last year. So this year, they're going to have some guys that have been in the fire and performed in the fire. So I'm not really concerned about who they put out there at corner. I'm not really concerned about who they put out there at safety because, hey, J.J. Roberts returns. You're talking about an all-conference safety, right? A guy that was second on the team in tackles last year. And he missed games. So he's just a ball hawk, another local kid. Uh, linebacker for me is where it is a little concerning. You know, we were we lost four, I believe it was, like back to back to back to back in the portal. And some of those guys we thought were going to be starters. Um, so what are we going to do there? I don't know. We went out and made some – made some moves. There are some youngsters on the roster that we think are going to step up and be, you know, play a bigger role this year. Son of former uh, Marshall linebacker and uh, Heard Hall of Famer Max Yates. His son Jaden Yates is on the roster. He was a freshman last year, played special teams, played linebacker. So we expect him to contribute in a big way. As far as what the X's and O's are going to look like, I really don't know what to tell you. Uh, we do know that Marshall needs to get back to the defense that we saw two years ago. They were stifling, and Marshall absolutely won games because of that defense. If we're going to be trying to break in an all-new offense, we're going to need to have a solidified defense to make it a little easier to do that. So thing, things are definitely going to change. I mean, that's why you replaced four coaches. You needed some things to change. Huff recognized that, and he made the moves. Uh, they brought in more than serviceable coaches. They brought in intelligent, high IQ guys. And, we, and there were athletes on the roster already. They brought on more. Russ, I mean, what, what do you say on top of all that? It, it's more of the unknown for us. It is unknown. The only thing that I'll say is uh, scheme-wise, 
you know, I mentioned earlier that I picture us going more up tempo. In uh, 2012, we were maybe one, maybe two in tempo uh, on offensive plays and speed and, and things like that. And we had an absolutely porous defense because they were just on the field the entire game. So I look for something if we're going up tempo, but not to that crazy level this year, but also mm-hmm. with an air raid where, you know, a couple of drop passes or an errant pass and all of a sudden you're three and out, your defense is back on there. I think that uh, we are going to have to try and force turnovers. Uh, we're going to have to be that uh, team that is uh, looking for those interceptions and everything, but also uh, just bringing the heat with uh, blitzes and uh, looking to sack the quarterback and raise uh, all kinds of hell on defense to try to get the offense back on the field and uh, maybe even pick sixes, scoop and scores, things like that. So I look for us to be an aggressive defense. And uh, when we talk about the defensive line, I think it'll be apparent why. So so speaking about that defensive line, they they take a pretty big hit in the offseason losing their uh, their top three guys in terms of sacks and pressures last year, um, Sam Burton and then Owen Porter to graduation, and then Elijah Austin off to the uh, University of Miami. But not all is lost. They returned some experienced guys, such as Mike Green, Tyquay's Legs, and Isaiah Gibson Sr., among others. How did that group look, and is there anyone that kind of stands out to kind of help replace that, uh, that lost production from a pass rush perspective? Yeah, so we brought in all kinds of people. However, uh, we already had uh, Mike Green here. We had um, uh, Gibby, Isaiah Gibson Sr. here, and uh, already had Taquez Legs here um, that all have been very, very important cogs in our defense. Mike Green was the young transfer last year that as the season went on, he got more and more playing time. Uh, He looks to factor in a major portion this year. Uh, it was just hard to break into that defensive line starting four because, like you said, those uh, three that left were just so good, right? Um, but um, we brought in Dave Harris from Colorado. We brought in, uh, let's see here, um, Jabari Ishmael uh, didn't get to play last year at University of Miami. He was out with uh, an injury, missed all the year. Um, we brought in... Uh, Jacarius Clayton from uh, Mississippi State, Michael Green I already mentioned, Jason Shuford from East Carolina, uh, Chris Thomas from University yeah. of Florida. Yeah, uh, we brought in a lot of people, and we've got some intriguing freshmen. Uh, one, Braden Ward is a West Virginia kid uh, from uh, – in the Charleston area, 30, 45 minutes away, an hour away. And uh, he's six foot six, got an unbelievable motor. I mean, just seems like he's going to be a good player for us. This defensive line is my number one unit going into the year of any offensive defensive units. I am not worried a bit about this defensive line. I think it is by far a strength. And I think that we've got, so many people to plug in. Can we replace the exact production of Owen Porter? Uh, can we do Sam Burton? Maybe not in individuals, but as a group, I think that we're going to have a comparable year to the last two years that we've had, and it's always been a standout for us. Yeah. I, I'm. There's some other guys that I'm intrigued by, right? Uh, Russ did not mention uh, a fellow that committed last year, and now he's going to be a red shirt freshman that's Benny Tashita. he comes out of Louisville Kentucky oh, yeah. Mar- yeah. Marshall got it on, on him early and he committed early and at 6'3 294 is a red shirt freshman he hadn't been playing football that long but man they they all talked about this raw talent that just needed uh to be honed and there needed some direction added to it and that's where a guy like Ralph Street comes into the mix to you know kind of hone that skill set Jacarius Clayton, Russ mentioned, the guy comes from Mississippi State. If I'm not mistaken, this is a guy, six foot four, two thirty five, red shirt sophomore. He was a hybrid. He was playing tight end also. And the question tight, was, he gonna tight play, end. was he going to play tight end for Marshall, or is he going to be a defensive lineman? Well, he comes in and playing defensive lineman. And to me, if you also played tight end, 
you're not an interior defensive lineman. That guy's probably going to be an edge rusher, right? And yeah. if you throw him on the edge opposite Mike Green, who is just a athletic freak. I mean, he is unbelievable. He really – the light ball really went on for him in that last third of the season. Um, if you're going to – I'll tell you what. I, if you're going to ask me in a minute, I'm going to answer it now. Mike Green is my defensive breakout player. <laughs> That's how much I think he's poised to be that guy. He's the next, next great defensive end. For Marshall University, fans love him already, and he just—I—I I, I don't know how to explain it, man. He just wants to put his head down and go to work. You know what I mean? It's like in a, in a world where kids care about likes and retweets, and he doesn't. You know, he just wants to go to work, get in the gym, hone his craft, and then go terrorize on game day. Yeah. And for all the—I th- don't have any problem with social media, right? That's how we grew. That's how we all grow. But it's refreshing to get a guy that just wants to go to freaking work, man. He just wants to get sweaty and freaking play football. And that's Mike Green. And I think he's going to be – the fans across the Sun Belt and the G5 are going to be like, wow, this kid at Marshall is pretty unreal. So I'm with Russ. I am not concerned about defensive line. It, it, I'm so high on our tight end room. Defensive line is right behind for the one that I'm not worried about. And it's it's easier to do that with tight end. Like I said, there's only five or six of them on the roster. There's a lot more, right? And, and it's a lot more moving parts along the defensive line. But I am absolutely not worried about defensive line. For all the questions that I may have for linebacker, I don't have any for defensive line. None. Well, let's talk about that linebacker. One other group. name. Oh, go ahead, Russ. So, sorry, one other name that I didn't mention we brought in from Virginia is Olison Conme, Olison Conme Ogunloye, and uh, he is intriguing to me as well. I, I just, with everybody that we brought in who were returning and everything, yeah, we lost a lot. I'm just, I think there's so many big bodies and uh, so many athletes. It's not just, hey, we're bringing in somebody that's uh, – six foot five and 380 pounds. And we're just going to put him there as a roadblock. We've got guys that are amazing athletes on the defensive line. So we'll look at that linebacking group. They lost our top three guys in terms of snap. They graduated their leading tackler from a year ago and Eli Neal, uh, Keyshawn Brown graduated and they lost uh, Steven Dix junior to Arkansas. This room looks young. Katie, Mm -hmm. you mentioned, you're like, Hey, I'm a little bit worried about here what do you guys expect from this group in 2024? And who do you think takes the field there in those linebacker spots week one versus Stony Brook? Uh, let me answer the second question first. Who I think is going to trot out there. We uh, JC Anderson is a lock because he's, uh, he's performed for us for a number of years. He's a red shirt senior been here. He's a program guy. He didn't transfer in. He's been here, right? Um, he's a lock. I think Jaden Yates is is a lock as well because he played last year in the mix of all those guys that you just mentioned that departed. Uh, the 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 third linebacker I don't really know. It could be a number of guys, right? But I I like um, the thought of a Leon Hart Jr. He's a kid that's also been in the program. He didn't transfer. He comes out of Miami, Florida. Really highly recruited when we were able to get him. Uh, so those are three guys that I think are, are my favorites if I had to pick. But the questions are depth. That's what it is. You know, we, we are, we're talking about the guys that we expect to start or I expect to start this year. They were all depth guys last year. And, and now those guys don't really have too many options behind them. Yeah, there's linebackers on the roster, but there's not a lot of them, right? And there's, not, and there's even less guys that have played. So – that's where the questions come. It's not about ability. It's not about having the athletes. It's about the rigors of an entire season with a not so deep room, right? You got four or five guys that you could probably make some hay with. Three for sure. Three for sure. Um, I just don't think that they are necessarily done. I think that's one of those rooms where you might see an ad in the portal late in the process, you know? Um, and those type of things have been beneficial to Marshall and a lot of schools. You know, there've been super impact players that have come in, in, you know, late July, early August, even, you know? So, um, the, the, the top three guys, I, I feel like, well, if they were able to stay healthy, absolutely. I would have no worries about them and how they would stack up against many other linebacking cores across the conference. 
but it's the overall depth of the room that that concerns me. I think you're going to see transfer Ashton Heflin from uh, Georgia Tech. I think you're going to see him heavily in the mix, if not starting. Uh, you got to remember Georgia Tech linebackers. Uh, that's what Coach Seymour coached, and he's yep. the linebacker coach. He he brought this kid over, so he was high on him. You know, if he wasn't high on him, he wouldn't have. He would have said, "Sorry, we don't have a spot for you." But he told him to come over here, so I look for him to be heavily in the mix. Uh, and also, uh, you got Landon Watson from uh, TCU, six foot one, two forty five. He's coming from TCU, and he's a redshirt junior, so he's got experience. This is a young crew. I look for him to be heavily in the mix. Don't know if he'll start that sort of thing, but he should get a lot of time just out of nature of everybody else, man, is uh, they haven't had a whole lot of snaps in division one college football. You know, they haven't had two full years in the weight room and a, a strength and conditioning program and just everything that it takes coming to campus to get into college mode from high school, you know, how you eat, juggling your classes, all the different things that go on uh, as a red shirt junior, he has experience with that. So I look for him to be in the mix as well. Also, if I'm not mistaken, Russ, wasn't he kind of like a defensive end slash linebacker at TCU? Wasn't he kind of a hybrid type guy? I seem to recall talking it, talking about that when we were talking about him. Yeah, I don't know if that was uh, because of him or because of their scheme or whatever, but he did have uh, you know a history of playing both. All right, uh, moving over to the defensive backfield, they also took a hit this offseason with the losses of Diane Hill uh, to University of Miami and then first-team all-sun belt defensive back Mike Aram to graduation. However, they do return a fair amount of production. Um, the aforementioned second-leading tackle last year, J.J. Roberts returns, A.J. McGee and, and Josh Moten. And they also have some uh, freshman standouts that returned from a year ago, like Jacoby Henderson and Amir Foster. What can we expect from this unit here in 2024? Well, out of the gate, let's let's give Micah Abraham his due. We lost him to graduation, yes, but he also ended up in the NFL. <laughs> okay, so he's a he's an Indianapolis Colt. So it's yeah, he was a great man, and we we asked some of these same questions at at the beginning of last year because we were fresh off of losing Stephen Gilmore to the you know who eventually you know lands in Detroit to play for the Lions, and we thought, okay, can um, Abraham do it? with somebody else opposite him. And he proved he absolutely could. So we're asking some of these same questions, but this is where all those young DBs, the AG McGee's that you talked about, the Josh Moten's that you talked about, uh, even guys like Jadarius Green McKnight, who's played for us a number of, in a number of situations, he's a red shirt junior, right? He's a Florida state transfer. D does the light bulb fully go on? And is he that impact player that we expected him to be? Is he going to be in the mix? Right. Um, Ishmael Ibrahim, a guy that comes over from the University of Texas last year, super highly recruited out of high school. I is he going to be in the mix this year? I've been high on Jacoby Henderson since he was a true freshman in his first spring ball. And we watched him go up against our then number one wide receiver, Corey Gamage, who was physically imposing. And he just went toe to toe with Corey Gamage. I've just been, I, I think Jacoby finds his way. Um, in the three-man rotation at safety, I mean, J.J.'s got it pretty much locked up. He's not really going to come off the field unless, you know, somebody's helping him off the field. He's just that good of a player. Daytuan Smith is another guy that has played a lot of ball for the herd. He's another redshirt junior. Marshall's not hurting in the defensive backfield. This is where the, the, the rough coverages, the missed calls, all that stuff as a young DB last year – kind of goes out the window and you get to benefit from it this year. You know, again, this is another one of those uh, a story as old as time type things. At some point, you've got to cut your teeth. These guys did it, a lot of them together last year. And then you talk about uh, the coaches that we bring in, Henry Baker and, again, Bob Shoup. Nobody's going to coach them up like these guys, obviously. The, Bob Shoup has forgotten more about uh, defensive football than I will ever learn. And Henry Baker has been putting guys into the NFL from the University of Michigan for the last four years. What more can you ask for? As a G5, what more can you really ask for? You really can't. The athletes are there. The skill sets are there. The playing time is there. Now it's about mentally can you get yourself in the right spot? Do you know where you're supposed to be? Are you advanced enough in your, in your defensive uh, playbook to know where your teammates are going to be? Right? 
and I think that we're going to see improved secondary play this year. It sucks to lose Micah Abraham. Absolutely sucks. That guy locked down half of the football field. But I think there are a couple of DBs, two, three, four of them from the corner slot, that depending on which two are on the field at any given time, also half of the field can be locked down. And whoever's throwing to the side of the field that J.J. Roberts is on, good luck. Good luck. Because your your, your wide out is either going to take a lick or maybe he'll come down with the football and go the other way. Not worried too much uh, about the herd secondary, other than, man, it sure does suck to lose the Iceman. Yeah, and to add to that, uh, be on the lookout for Isaiah Johnson. He transfers in from Arizona State. Uh, originally uh, grew up here in West Virginia, and he was a good performer out there. Um, redshirt junior. Um, I think that what is intriguing to me is how often we will be in the nickel with our current linebacking situation. You know, will we have that hybrid uh, um, safety that would be like too small for a traditional outside linebacker, but he's there on, on the field. I would look for us, uh, you know, if we don't have a big portal ad at linebacker, uh, just with the the youth that we have there, that we might be in the nickel quite a bit and uh, go with three safeties and two cornerbacks. But that's just a feeling I have. Mm-hmm. Is, is there a particular safety you think that might be suited for that hybrid linebacker safety role or – I don't know. Um, it kind of feels like that might be the J- the Jadarius Green McKnight role because he's he's just kind of played that ish. You know, he never was a linebacker, so to speak, but he plays. You know, he likes to play a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage, and and it while that might not be a natural fit, it might be something that he could morph into in uh, in certain scenarios. I don't think Marshall doesn't have a guy on the roster. There was a great one, a great one. This has been nearly a decade ago. And and if you're like me, whenever you see a current player, you always compare them to a former player, right? And that that great hybrid linebacker safety that we had that I compare everybody to, that herd fans that are going to listen to this are going to go, yeah, that's the guy. It's the great DJ, DJ Hunter, Hunter, without a doubt. I mean, and to put that on pro terms, since you're not um, really an adept into the, in, into the depths of Marshall players, Think Cam Chancellor, right? That's DJ Hunter, Cam Chancellor, okay? And I don't know that we have a guy like that, but we have a guy that could potentially become that if 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 he's needed. Jadarius uh, Green McKnight is 212 pounds at 5'11". So, you know, he's got the size of what uh, you would expect that could fill, fill that hybrid role. Uh, you're just not going to put out someone. Uh, I'll just put here. Uh, Ishmael Ibrahim is listed as six one one sixty six. That just doesn't scream hybrid linebacker. But right. Jadarius Green McKnight has the athleticism, but he's also at two hundred twelve pounds. He's heavier than some schemes outside linebackers already at that safety position. So to me, that seems like the natural fit. Yeah, J- Jadarius is the only DB and or safety on the entire roster that is over 200 pounds. All right, Russ. Um, so, Katie, I got your breakout guy is Mike Green. Is that correct? Got to be Mike Green. It has to be. All right, Russ. If you had to pick a defensive player to have a breakout type season in 2024, who are you picking? Same, Mike Green. Uh, It's his athleticism for me. It's the fact that that potential uh, was already there, but he was just under a couple of superstars and trying to get enough snaps in. And then even at that, he got those snaps later on in the year. He worked his way in underneath uh, these high performers. And uh, Coach Huff said when he brought him over here as a transfer, Uh, the coach over at Virginia said that he was the most talented player on their roster. The Virginia Cavaliers, Mike Green, as a freshman, was their most talented. That was his year that he redshirted. So uh, just look on Twitter and you'll see some of the the feats uh, that he does in the weight room. And he is still so young, but uh, he is just a freak of nature and uh, he's got the speed, the strength, the moves. Uh, he, he's going to be a great one for us. All right. If you are watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you are listening to us in podcast form, please rate and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. 
Thank you all for your support. And until the next time, we are the G5 Hive. Thank <laughs> you.